Over 80% of the world's energy needs are provided by coal, oil and gas. Although technologies to extract fossil fuels may have changed over the decades, the core products themselves have never been challenged. Until now. A lot of people question whether a large dinosaur of an oil and gas company can really compete in such a new high-tech environment. Pressure to reduce carbon emissions is putting the future of fossil fuel giants in jeopardy, encouraging the growth of alternative methods to generate and distribute power. We are not just dairy farmers here, we are energy farmers as well. Every private person can produce his own energy. In just eight years, the value of the world's biggest power companies has halved, leaving industry giants scrambling to redefine their role in this new energy world. When I started my career, we were a monopoly. It's always technology that truly disrupts things. Across the world, old industries are facing disruption on an unprecedented scale. People are not taking our taxes. The pressure to adapt has never been greater. It is always survival of the fittest. That's capitalism. Because where there's threat, there's also opportunity. December 2015, the Paris Climate Conference. For the first time ever, 195 countries agreed to a legally binding climate deal to reduce carbon emissions. I think everyone in the oil and gas industry agrees that it's going to be a different future. This $5 trillion industry may be facing a seismic shift, but that doesn't mean it's ready to ditch the dirty fossil fuels that made it rich. Instead, Many companies are banking on new methods to clean up an old process. Norwegian oil and gas giant Statoil struck it rich in the North Sea in the late 1960s. Over four decades later, at its Sleipner gas rig, the company is attempting to make fossil fuel production cleaner. We have an ambition to become the most carbon efficient oil and gas producer in the world. The world will look for companies like ourselves that take a proactive stand on this and deliver oil and gas to the world, but doing it in a sustainable manner. Statoil's business still relies on the harmful burning of fossil fuels by its customers. But at least the company is trying to reduce its own carbon footprint. It's transformed some of its offshore rigs with technology that enables engineers to separate the carbon dioxide and pump it underground. Statoil's Sleipner gas rig is the world's first offshore carbon capture storage plant. At Sleipner, we have a lot of CO2 in our gas, so we need to capture that, strip it out of the gas stream before we can export the gas. In here, you will have a continuous stream of captured CO2 going down through this well into the subsurface, about 1,000 meters below us, and then we store the CO2 in the subsurface forever and ever. Each year, Statoil stores one million tons of CO2, making extraction less carbon intensive. They believe that prioritizing gas over more harmful fossil fuels will further reduce global warming and keep them relevant for decades to come. One of the advantages with gas is that it's very abundant, it's very reliable, and it's very flexible. You can turn the gas stream on and off, so you can regulate your gas flow very, very easily. Gas may be reliable, but fossil fuels will always mean carbon emissions. Wind and solar are cleaner, but depend on subsidies. To take on the consistency of fossil fuels, they face a huge challenge the unpredictable weather. In Bavaria, a tiny village has used those subsidies to take up the challenge. This community believes it's found a way to produce a steady energy supply 
just from renewable sources, raising the real prospects of a future free from fossil fuels. We have not just uh, dairy milk, uh, we have as well energy farming. And uh, here you can see uh, uh, part of our solar panels. Um, we have several points where we catch the sun and make energy. Norbert and Christina Bechteller's family farm has been providing the local community with dairy products for over 200 years. But they now have a new income from solar energy. Ein wichtiger Teil ist mittlerweile auch äh, unsere Photovoltaikanlage. Der Strom, den wir auf den Dächern produzieren und selber nicht brauchen, wird in der Region verbraucht. Producing your own energy with solar panels isn't revolutionary. But in this village, they're combining solar with other renewables in an attempt to achieve the holy grail of a steady energy supply. And they're prepared to use anything to do it. The cows always produce manure. Deputy Mayor Gunter Mergele has helped drive the village's pioneering efforts to make renewable energy a realistic option. We can prove that we always have more than 100% of energy, even if there is no wind and no sun at all. There's one renewable that never disappears, as it can be sourced from the decay of virtually any organic matter. It's called biogas. Of the four biogas plants in the village, Farmer Einseidler runs the largest. Combining these different sources has been so successful, the village now generates five times more energy than it needs. But that's just part of the challenge of turning renewables into a credible energy supply. It's not only about renewable energy generation, it's also about power saving and energy saving. In order to be able to use wind and solar power literally around the clock, storage is absolutely key. Within this community, one young company has developed a home battery system that enables the villagers to store the excess solar energy they produce for later use. We are the first to offer um, storage systems for the residential market in the world. And obviously, storage helps customers to use solar power regardless if the sun is shining or not. The technology behind this battery system also holds the key to a much bigger prize for the villagers, supplying energy to each other. Our battery systems are online and we can recognize in real time who is currently feeding power into the grid and who still needs power from the grid. And an amazing result is that you have both customers who have excess power and customers who need power from the grid. And our general idea was let them share their power between each other and get rid of stinky coal plants and nuclear power stations. Our customers can literally replace the traditional utilities 100% and go independent. Norbert and Christina supply 50 neighboring households with the energy they generate. Für die Haushalte ist es das Schöne, dass sie auch wissen, wo der Strom produziert wird und nicht von großen Konzernen oder weit entfernten Firmen bezogen werden muss. Where this community has led, many others have now followed. There are now almost 1,000 energy cooperatives around Germany. It's a major challenge for the country's big four utilities. In eight years, the biggest, E.ON, has seen its share price fall by over three quarters. When I started my career, we were a monopoly. Technology has tremendously changed. Renewables are, are getting cheaper and cheaper. Customer behavior is changing tremendously. And society with climate change and other issues has total different expectations to the industry. So the industry was shaken up at its fundament. And it's a total different industry from the 27 years ago when I started. E.ON's income from fossil fuels has fallen by more than a third since 2008. The company recently made a drastic decision, 
to fully commit to the renewable revolution. E.ON has taken a very brave step. We broke the company, I would say, in two. All the commodity businesses, the traditional fossil power plants, all those businesses, we spin off into a company called Uniper, and we are remaining with the renewables. E.ON plans to spin off the majority share of its fossil fuel assets by the end of 2016 and scale up its investment in wind and solar. But rather than focus on just generating renewable power, E.ON is sensing its real opportunity lies in managing this diverse new supply on an industrial scale. This green society needs to be managed. Here you need to manage millions of feed-in and consumption sites. You will have sharing economies in between. You will have under and over consumption at times. This management equation, big data mining, technical competence, is obviously something this world needs and E.ON will strive for being a capable partner in that. To secure its place in this new decentralized energy world, this former monopoly is taking steps that would have been unthinkable just a decade ago. We are open for any kind of partnerships, uh, with any partner, with any customer. And yes, uh, this is also a new attitude. We don't need to control the world. E.ON's partnerships have produced a raft of renewable energy projects. At the Arcona wind farm in the Baltic Sea, their investment partner is a surprising newcomer to the alternative energy industry, Norwegian oil and gas giant, Statoil. Altogether it's 1.2 billion euros, and uh, we're taking 50% of that. We're talking real money here, it's not just branding or greenwashing. We expect tremendous growth with wind in particular, and, you know, if you're a business person, you want to take advantage of those growth opportunities and, and be part of it. Statoil, like E.ON, is positioning itself to take advantage of the energy industry's new horizons. The company's next project draws on four decades of offshore experience to steal a march on far newer rivals. It's always exciting. It's the first floating full-scale windmill in the world. Even if it's very windy, it looks like it's still, but it's actually floating. The world's biggest offshore operator has developed a floating turbine that can be mass-produced cheaper and quicker than existing static windmills. I think it actually makes some sense that it was an oil and gas company that came up with this because we are reusing a lot of technology from the oil and gas sector. We're using platform technology, it's ballasted, it doesn't have any legs. The special software allows the blades to move in certain direction, which optimizes the wind production, but it also makes the tower uh, stand still. Statoil's first floating wind farm is scheduled to be delivered to a site off the east coast of Scotland by 2017. I think this is the future. It's the future of wind, at least. You can have them anywhere in the world, anywhere in any kind of sea. So this allows us to move further from shore get better wind and uh, produce uh, cheaper electricity. Other fossil fuel giants, including Shell, Exxon and Total, are also starting to hedge their bets with a range of investments in biofuel, batteries, solar and wind. It might seem like a surprising move, but by embracing these alternative technologies now, forward-thinking oil and gas companies might just be able to withstand the disruption caused by the renewable revolution.